You're a, you're a skeptic, obviously. Is Brexit made us poorer? Uh, no. So let's have an immediate dose of reality. The Centre for Economic Reform claims the government has lost out on £40 billion in taxes because of the damage done to the country's output by leaving the European Union. The UK economy as a whole has been permanently damaged by Brexit. It's reduced the economy's potential output significantly, eroded business investment. I mean, look, if we hadn't had Brexit, we probably wouldn't be talking about an austerity budget this week. The need for tax rises, spending cuts, wouldn't be there if Brexit hadn't reduced the economy's potential output so much. In fact, the OBR report the government is relying on says Brexit will result in the UK's trade intensity being a staggering 15% lower in the long run than if the UK had remained in the EU. It says evidence suggests Brexit has had a significant adverse impact on UK trade, reducing both overall trade volumes and the number of trading relationships between UK and EU firms. And the hard Brexit championed by the Prime Minister is contributing to UK trade performance falling to its worst level on record. You've talked about honesty and you've talked about Brexit. The reality of Brexit for many companies is delays, red tape, additional costs. They can't hire the people they want to come to this country and you can't stop the people you don't want to come to this country. Would it not be more honest to acknowledge that Brexit is failing on its own terms for business and those terms need to be readdressed? No. Well, let's have another dose of reality. Businesses say they feel like they're banging their heads against a brick wall over improving trade with the European Union. That's according to the British Chambers of Commerce, which says its members are still struggling with the UK's post-Brexit trading arrangements. And the truth is that because of all sorts of new paperwork, there are now 20-page export health certificates for vets, there's the 27-page catch certificates for exporting fish, there's duties for goods of all kinds which don't meet rules of origin requirements. And if that if it's going to make trading with business with Europe harder and harder and harder. There were figures published just before Christmas, which you probably saw. The government Brexit has cost the government £40 billion a year in lost tax revenue. What, as a very leading businessman, what has the impact of Brexit been on business generally in the UK? It's been catastrophic. In fact, six years on from the UK's decision to leave the European Union, Brexit is still proving the biggest headache for British businesses, ranking even higher than Russia's war in Ukraine, Covid or rising energy costs. The fact of the matter is that under the Conservative government, the UK has become the first country in history to actually impose trade barriers on itself. I think if you look at the facts, our growth has been, as I said in the speech, about the same as Ger Germany since the Brexit referendum. After the pandemic, there was a trade recovery by all the other G7 countries and Britain's trade recovery has been more or less flat. We see the UK pretty close to the bottom of the league table in terms of the forecast for economic growth, particularly in 2023. So the UK essentially sees no growth at all. And the only country that was worse than the UK was sanctioned Russia. And of course, the UK has uniquely suffered the damage of Brexit. So we want to be one of the most prosperous countries in Europe. And today I want to set out our plan to address those issues. That plan, our plan for growth, is necessitated, energised and made possible by Brexit. Well, let's take a look at how it's going so far. We could have cheaper food, clothing and footwear straight away. The price of the weekly shop, if you look at food prices, has gone up by about 16%. And for the poorest families, the things they typically buy have gone up by even more. Of course, global inflation pressures, largely from the war in Ukraine, are a factor. But in the background and unique to the UK, we also have the impact of Brexit. The, the simple way of thinking about what Brexit's done to the economy is that in the period that happened after the referendum, there was the very, very sort of powerful, the biggest depreciation that any of the world's four major economies have seen overnight, that that contributed to increasing prices, reduced wages, and I'm not talking simply through real wages, but also through nominal wages. About 6% of inflation in food prices Sorry, 6% is the number which is higher than the rest of the world so far as right. a result of the Brexit impact. Two years after Britain left the EU, Brexit has actually made households poorer, adding almost £6 billion to Britain's food bills over a two-year period. And it's the households with the least that have been affected the most. And then we have those promised trade deals. New pork markets, the government's trade minister has excitedly tweeted. Great news for British farmers who can now sell pork to South Korea, 
We've removed a barrier which blocked exports of products such as bacon and pork sausages and could be worth up to £1 million over five years. Imagine a government so desperate for a benefit of Brexit that its MPs are actually toasting a new pork deal with South Korea worth £1 million over five years. That's just £250,000 a year, and it's not even guaranteed. Meanwhile, the Centre for Economic Reform claims the government has lost out on £40 billion in taxes because of the damage done to the country's output by leaving the European Union. Yes, we've done some new trade deals, for instance, with Australia. And on that, listen to former Environment Secretary George Eustace addressing the House of Commons on November 14th. The first step is to recognise that the Australia trade deal is not actually a very good deal for the UK. The truth of the matter is that the UK gave away far too much for far too little in return. We lose 4% of our GDP by Brexit. We gain 0.08% by the government's own estimate, through this trade deal with Australia. And then there's the trade deal with New Zealand. British farmers have reacted with shock to the terms of a new free trade deal with New Zealand. The deal will see kiwi meat imported without tariffs and farmers in the UK say they get nothing in return. It's us surrendering to you uh, New Zealanders and giving you a great deal and we're getting nothing out of it. So have there actually been any tangible benefits of Brexit? The last couple of minutes together, there are benefits to be had from Brexit, are there, Lord Spence? Yes, many. Outline some that we need to explore Well, now. why don't, for example, financial services. One of them, which again will of course not poll well, is stop, would you take away the cap on bankers' bonuses? Well, surprise, surprise, that's one benefit of Brexit the Tories have actually delivered.